first memory in the game of hockey for me really was playing street hockey outside our apartment building in Toronto growing up, probably 1979, 1980, with my older cousin and his friends. And really, they wouldn't, they wouldn't let me in the net because some of those guys are born in 67, some of them are born in 70, 68, 71. I'm born in 75. So I was basically just the guy that would chase the ball. I would chase the tennis ball or the street hockey ball. And then one guy who was always in the net, his family moved from Greece to Toronto, and then they moved from Toronto back to Greece. And they said, if you want to hang around, you have to go in the net. I'm like, perfect, that's where I want to go. 93 drafts, uh, you get drafted uh, by the Panthers. Yep. How big of a deal was that guy from, from Toronto to get drafted to the NHL? It was massive because for me, I, I, since I was six, my goal was to make the NHL be an NHL goalie. There was not like, I want to be an accountant, I want to be an electrician, I want to do... I was going to make the NHL. That was my goal as a six-year-old. So, seven, 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 seven teams in NHL on your career. Yeah. What are the best memories from, from that uh, from that great time? career? Yeah, from that time. Thank you. I would, you know what's interesting? The, here's what I would say, because I played in the minors too, yeah. right? So I played American League two years, IHL half and half two years. As good as I was in the minors, it was really hard for me when I first got to the NHL. I couldn't win a game. And although I practiced really well and in games I was playing pretty well, I couldn't win a game to save my life. And I started to see like, holy, this league is unbelievable. And the guys, you know, and I'm sure Billy's off camera, he'll tell you the same thing. All the idols that we were watching, Fuhr, Richter, Hashik, all these different guys, they were, you had the same, you had the talent, yeah. but you didn't have the understanding of how to put a game, Patrick Waugh, Ed Belfort, yeah. all the great, Curtis Joseph, you just didn't have the understanding of how to put the game together. So that was very humbling for me to learn that. And once I learned that and I started going and I started to get my feet, I realized just that I was always all hockey all the time since I was young. Yeah. And at NHL, it's also, it's also all hockey all the time, but all the, all the time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah of so course. So that, that, that was the big thing. But as far as memories from teams, every team was unique. Uh, playing in Florida, I'll always be thankful because they, they drafted me and they developed me in the minors and gave yeah. me the chance to play. Uh, playing for all the New York teams is amazing, right? Obviously, um, especially Rangers Original Six. Carolina was special because we went to Stanley yeah. Cup Final in 02. 02. So I'm very grateful because now in my second career, I played in these different markets. I have friends in it everywhere yeah. and it's very helpful. Well, there's a lot of different kind of stories from the former players that they quit in the, playing in the NHL. Mm -hmm. Was it a hard decision for you? I'll tell you what was weird. I, I didn't tell you this at the start of the conversation. My parents are from beautiful Barbados in the yeah. Caribbean, right? And so after 14 years pro, we're at home in Barbados, literally on a boat. And I'm looking around and I'm on the phone and I'm seeing all these goalies are signing for all these teams. I'm like, what the f what's going on here? This is what's happening. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm like, yeah. my agent, you're going to go here. You're going to go here. You're going to go there. All these windows are closing. And I swear to God, out of nowhere, the TV networks start calling my phone. Oh, like this is, it's like a movie how yeah. this happened. So the hockey net in Canada, CBC starts calling MSG, New York, NBC at the time. And then NHL networks start calling. So while this is happening, I'm still kind of looking at my phone like, how come I didn't sign in this team? But it's almost like this was a sign from God, right? Yeah. That these teams are, these networks are calling you for a reason. And then to add to that, what was crazy is, I don't know if you remember the name Andre Trefilov, the goalie. Yeah, Andre. of course. So I played with Andre Trefilov with the Vipers, right? Yeah. Detroit in the IHL. You'll love this story. I haven't talked to this guy since 97. We played Detroit Vipers, 98, whatever. He calls me, Wixie, Treffy, you want to come to Russia? <laughs> we give you 2.5 million, 2.5 million. I haven't talked to this guy in all these years. I don't know how he got my phone. I'm like, Treffy, is that you? You're calling me? He's like, 2.5 million. <laughs> I, I go, okay, let me talk to my wife. I'll call you back. He calls me back 15 minutes later. Tre Wixie, Treffy, you want to come to Russia? Two million. Two, I'm like, two million? It was just 2.5. He calls me back, Wixie. 1.5. The, fi the final time, Wixie, 1 million. You started at 2.5, now it's 1.5? I'm like, whatever, man, I'll get back to you. 
So nobody really knew. I talked it over with my family. From there, I just realized that I'm gonna go for it. I'm going for TV. I love TV, I love media. That's gonna be my career. Well, you're, you're, well, you're one of the biggest names in, in TV, in, in hockey sports. Uh, how challenging is it to be uh, such a big name doing covering, covering NHL in North America and, and in your occasion, the whole world, basically? Thank you for that. I would, it's, I look at it as, a, as an earned privilege, yeah. right? I, I really do. I look at it as an earned privilege and I know you feel the same. I know Billy, a lot of the really talented people in this business that put the sport first. Yes. We don't forget where we come from. We don't forget what the path was and we respect the craft. We respect the business. We respect the sport and the players and the fans. The players are the product yeah. and it's a responsibility for us to be like the bridge between the product and the viewer, the yeah. fan, right? Yeah. So I never forget that. I always think of that first to serve the game. And there was no handbook to learn because I didn't go yeah. to school for journal broadcast journalism. Yeah. Same here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right? Same here. There's no, we just learn as we go. Yeah. Let's just try it. Let's yeah. just do it. What's the worst thing that can happen? Yeah. You know, we learned as we go and just always try to get better. But here's the big thing for me. It's always working the phone and always watching games and being in the arena. Yeah. So I joke around. You know how they say like mice and rats, they like they get cheese, yeah. right? So that's why I joke around. I always say rink rats, they get the cheese. <laughs> that's my thing. So I was a rink rat since I was a kid. I'm a rink rat like you guys are now, which is why we're here. So it's such a, to me, it's, it's really important to work the phones, be connected and try to showcase these amazing athletes and our amazing sport to serve it to serve the sport, yeah. not to be this way, yeah. but to serve the sport and connect the player and the viewer. All the best and thank you, Kevin. Thank you, bro. Anytime, man. And hello to everybody in Finland. <laughs>